Well, we do have some breaking news this morning because the bill to ban so-called assault weapons died in committee very early this morning about 1 a.m. But this came after hours of passionate testimony that started Wednesday and went into the late night hours. The bill sponsor offered two amendments to whittle down the bill, but those also failed. Elizabeth Epps of Denver says she will press on. Meanwhile, a bill to ban ghost guns will be heard in committee this afternoon. Those are guns without serial numbers that can be made with do it yourself kits or 3D printers. Under the bill, anyone with a ghost gun has until January of next year to get it serialized. If they don't, the first offense would be a misdemeanor. Colorado lawmakers have advanced four other gun bills in this session. All four still need to be signed by the governor. They include raising the minimum age and creating a three day waiting period to buy a gun. Also expanding the red flag law and making it easier for victims of gun violence to sue gun manufacturers. Today, of course, April 20th marks 24 years since we lost 12 students and teacher Dave Sanders in a shooting at Columbine High School. The school will be closed as it always is on the anniversary. More than a thousand community members, including many current Columbine students, will be part of a day of service. You can learn more and share what you're doing on the website columbineserves.org. Well, we know how hard it is to find an affordable home in the metro, and even families bringing in higher incomes are getting priced out. Yeah, local and state lawmakers are looking at different ways to bring down the costs. Uh, so we want to look into a few of those. Denver 7's Veronica Acosta kicks off our coverage from Boulder. That city's looking at a program specifically to help the middle class. It is. Uh, last month, the average sale price of a home here in Boulder was $1.1 million, so not cheap by any means. And the thought of the average middle income family picking up, coming to Boulder and buying a house was pretty slim. But now city leaders here, they want to change that. And it's all with the help of a program that they actually started about four years ago. So this is the Middle Income Down Payment Assistance Program. Like I mentioned, it was started back in 2019. And just as its name, it would give middle income families money for a down payment on a home. Now it was halted because of COVID. Leaders say now is the time to make it happen. Here's who this could help and how. Households earning up to 120% of the median area income are eligible. So for a family of four, that's no more than $150,000. They can get access to a $200,000 no interest loan from the city to help make that down payment. And listen to why leaders say they want to make this a reality for these middle income families. There's just this huge gap. Not that 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 is not a big surprise to anyone, and it's not um, any big revelation here. But the idea is this program is just trying to figure out how to create some products in the market that are accessible to families earning a middle income. And one thing to remember here is that this home would be deed restricted, which basically means it limits how much the home's value can appreciate so that it remains at the same value if that initial family then chooses to go ahead and sell their home. City Council is going to be discussing this during their meeting tonight, and we'll keep you updated of what comes of it. In Boulder, I'm Veronica no. Costa, number seven. Unique idea there, though. Thank you, Veronica. Uh, we told you yesterday lawmakers made significant changes to a key housing bill working its way through the state legislature. I had a chance to talk with the three sponsors of the land use bill. Several cities have spoken out against this bill because it allowed multi-family housing like triplexes or duplexes to be built anywhere zoned for single family homes. Now the bill is merely encouraging more of that dense housing along key corridors and transit hubs. Doesn't that still take away local control and will we likely still see opposition to this even in its pared down form? And I understand that perspective. Uh, the reality is, though, that there is a place for state involvement in this area. And so that's what Senate Bill 213 seeks to do. Do you feel the necessary aspects of the bill to encourage affordable housing in Colorado were preserved. One of the, the biggest uh, elements of the bill that uh, was maintained and actually strengthened through the amendment process was the housing needs assessments. That is huge. That was something that was added through amendment is specifically identifying how much housing at each income level uh, is needed. As Senator Moreno does expect more changes will be made to the bill as it moves next through the Appropriations Committee and the Senate floor before going to the House.
A bill capping pet rent is headed to the governor's desk. That cap would be one and a half percent of the owner's rent or $35 a month, whichever is greater. It would also cap pet deposits at $300 on top of the existing security deposits and make those refundable. The bill would still allow landlords to restrict certain breeds of animals or simply not allow pets at all. Well, we all hate driving over potholes. We're always on the lookout for them, and now CDOT is working to fix them. The agency plans to move about $45 million from its reserve funding to make emergency road repairs during the spring and summer. The State Transportation Commission will vote on that new spending at its meeting tonight. The Nuggets are in control of their series against the Minnesota Timberwolves right now. The dunks just kept coming last night at Ball Arena. Aaron Gordon, Jamal Murray and Bruce Brown all took to the rim. Jamal Murray also led in scoring with 40 points. The Nuggets take game two, 122 to 113. Game three is tomorrow night in Minnesota. Tip off is at 730. Uh, meanwhile, the Avs get Ball Arena back tonight for game two of their playoff series against the Seattle Kraken. Expect a better showing than game one. They lost three to one but the abs know they made some critical mistakes and were just outplayed. They say they are going to turn that around tonight. The puck drops at 730. Well, this Sunday, uh, you can see what happened when HGTV came rolling into Fort Morgan, Colorado. Yeah, it's season two of Hometown Takeover. Crews spent months last year in the small town east of Denver, renovating businesses, homes, and public spaces. And it wasn't just those famous faces, the hosts from HGTV doing the work. I met with some of the locals who got involved. I showed up and a week later they, the show came and they were like, hey, we need a mural artist. And I was like, wow, I just got here, how crazy. <laughs> yeah, Randolph Torres uh, worked on a few of the mur murals, including this one right across from his tattoo parlor, or the tattoo parlor where he works as an artist. Uh, we also bumped into Jason Labonte, a woodworker owner of Just Rustic Furniture. Now, when the crew found out about him, they put him right to work, and he had a hand in about half the projects. And they make it look so easy, but how big of a, an undertaking would you say this was? I mean, it was, uh, there's a lot of sleepless nights. You know, yeah. I worked around the clock. There was no vacations or no yeah. time off for me, so we just worked every day. I mean, might we see you have your own show in the future? I mean, we hope so. <laughs> they, they talked about a uh, pilot program with okay. me. So, um, here in the next uh, month or two, we're going to be going up to South Dakota for another show. So already getting more work and more interest. Uh, season two of Hometown Takeover featuring Fort Morgan is on HGTV this Sunday. Lakewood's Cultural Center is holding a meaningful art exhibit this weekend. We'll show you the art and tell you the amazing and unique process behind some of these works. Also, C Boulder is doubling its financial aid program, what it would mean for thousands of in-state students.